Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michaela, and today I'm going to be talking about what it's like teaching fitness classes in college. And it's not just the Lululemon discount that makes me want to keep doing it. It's so much fun. Some of you may be looking for something you can do while in school that'll help keep you in shape, keep you busy. This is the perfect job for that. And you know, a lot of people think you're just getting paid to work out, but it's so much more. So luckily at Penn State, we had a group training program. I did not know this going into it. So I've always been really into working out. And if you actually go to my blog, Michaela's Mashup, you will see um, two posts. The first one is my fitness, kind of my fitness journey, how I became a group fitness instructor. And the other one is what you can do if you're interested in becoming a group fitness instructor. Those are just a little guideline, seven steps, I think it's about seven, of what I would do if I did not have this training program. I did not know really what I was getting myself into when I started, but it is the best thing I have ever done while being at Penn State and probably one of the best things I've ever done in my life so far. So let's start talking about what it is like. When I got to Penn State, I was I asked them, how do you get your fitness instructors at your studios? And so they gave me a lady's email and I signed up for the Kinesis 93 class. And the class just took us through learning the basics of being a fitness instructor and you learn how to teach a basic uh, full body workout class that was half cardio, like aerobics, cardio combos, and half muscle. Then we went into juniors, which was Kines 96, and that is where we learned, started to learn the classes that we were interested in teaching. And yeah, so that was so much work. It was so much fun, but we had projects. There were a certain amount of fitness classes we had to go to and evaluate, attend, evaluate. We had mentee, mentor meetings so much going on but you learn so much i originally just want to teach cycling and now i can teach a lot of different classes and i love teaching each one it's so much fun and it's nice to mix it up penn state they have a bunch of different types of formats you can learn you can pick from if you want to choose you can switch them every semester some people like to teach the same ones okay so i started teaching my fitness classes freshman year spring semester. So I was the only freshman in my class, which was very intimidating. I was very nervous throughout that whole year and it was hard to balance school and work and it is still hard to balance school and teaching fitness classes, but it's gotten a lot easier. You keep learning new formats, as many as you want, or you can stick with what you have, but once you've started teaching one a lot, then you get better at planning your class, planning your playlist. So freshman year, spring semester, I had one class on the schedule. Everyone in the juniors class had one class on the schedule. I was starting to get into the momentum of having that one class. We had a full body partner that we split it with. So um, she would teach one half the class, I would teach the other half and we would alternate and then that led up to us teaching once every week, once every other week. So that wasn't too tough. It was just, we'd spent that whole first semester learning how to teach that class and that was just pretty basic class too. So then we would also be assisting other classes. So I did barbell, bar, and cycling. So for bar, we actually, they have people come in for uh, like Schwinn, bar intensity, different classes like that to help us get extra certifications and then teach those classes. So I did the bar intensity one in the spring and then I just auditioned bar a little bit after that. But I auditioned, but I assisted barbell throughout that took me a while about five five six weeks to learn so once a week i would teach a little bit a little bit more and then i taught a full class and then the next time i auditioned the class and then i did cycling near the end of the semester end of that year i had gotten so much more out of the whole experience than i initially thought i just thought oh they're gonna teach us how to become a fitness instructor that's not gonna be that hard or anything so it is tough to be able to plan these classes and execute them properly is challenging and it takes so much practice and so much hard work so it's definitely something that if you want to get into it that you have to dedicate that time to by the end of my second semester i went home and for summer break and taught at a studio near my house, which was so much fun. And I love that studio. And I can't wait now with this coronavirus. I'm really hoping that group fitness can get back to where it was before. Um, considering like, I love Orange Theory, I go all the time. So like that has, if, you ever, if you've ever been, you know there's all the equipment's right next to each other. 
and they have a lot of people in one room. It can be a challenge to get group fitness to where it used to be with a lot of people in a room. And I'm really hoping we're able to figure it out soon because it'd be really upsetting if it takes a long time for us to be able to get to work out with other people again. So I taught over the summer and I had like an average of four classes I would teach a week, maybe. Some weeks I would teach a lot of classes and some weeks, some weeks I wouldn't teach very many. I would have a bar class every Tuesday. And then I had a small group training class. I think I had two of those on the schedule. I can't remember exactly. I know I had Monday morning, but I would sub them a lot too. And then I did, I had kids fitness classes also, which was so much fun. But, and then I subbed a ton of classes. You know, they had or like strength formats, kind of um, more muscular endurance, where you're using free weights or props. And then, um, all their classes there were heated too. It's totally different from teaching at school because the studio has a lot smaller classes versus teaching at Penn State. You can have like 40 people in one class. It doesn't feel like work, so that made it a lot more fun. And I also worked at the front desk there. So I was, I did spend a lot of time doing that over the summer, but the university pays as well. But studios can pay you a lot more, which is very nice. And considering that I didn't work very many hours over the summer, but I still was making a decent amount of money compared to how much my friends made babysitting and stuff. It really is a job that, you know, the more training you have, the more skills you have, that normally reflects in the types of jobs. So my mom always tells me try to get jobs that require some sort of skill or something because then it's better for your resume, which, I didn't start this for my resume, but it is better for your resume when you're having jobs that require some sort of skill, certification, and then you end up getting paid more. And it works out in the end because you get better at teaching these classes and making your plans, making your playlists, understanding the formats well and how you like to teach. So it ends up not being that much work at all. And I do like to make a new playlist and a new plan every class before because everyone has a schedule that they like to stick to. So you're getting a lot of the same people back in your classes. Now, some people go because they like your class, which makes you feel really good. And it's fun building those relationships with patrons, but there's also a lot of people that you're giving them their workout for the day. So you have to make sure that it's good for them, that they're gonna get make the most out of that hour that you have together. So yeah, I like to mix up my plans every single week, make a new playlist. Some classes, if I'm teaching the same week and it's very similar format, uh, like at the place I teach at over the summer, like you can get away with kind of using the same playlist um, in different classes the same week or using a lot of the same songs and mixing them up because if they're mind-body classes they could be more similar like bar and then the free weight classes are kind of like the same vibe that was pretty much my summer and it's a really good job to have over the summer when you don't have to balance schoolwork it's a lot easier you can teach a lot more some people do teach a ton of classes at school okay, let's go into sophomore year fall semester I had three classes on the schedule it had cycling, TBT, and barbell. So barbell boot camp, kind of similar to the Les Mills body pump class. For every every class, teaching it is different. You know, some you can plan in five seconds, like three, uh, like three, six fit, TBT, full body, that's all the same class. Sorry if it's confusing, but classes, that type of class, because I spent a year doing it already, I could do it really fast. and. It, for that particular class, I go into it with an idea in my brain and pick a couple of new exercises they haven't seen, and then that's that part. But then the first half, or the cardio portions, that's what I plan, and it doesn't take very long. But cycling, on the other hand, would take me like three to four hours to plan, which was, I just get really nitpicky with that class. Some people can plan it a lot quicker, and I did get faster over the semester. But at first, it would take me three to four hours most of the time planning my playlist because I was struggling with finding songs that were unique, finding songs that people knew, and finding that good mix of old throw or like throwbacks, new songs, and a variety of genres because especially teaching at a university, so many different people are coming to your classes. You're teaching to so many different fitness levels, so many different ages because there's professors, but there's mostly young people. Professors are all different ages also. So you have to just find like a good balance to appeal to everyone. And then with cycling, you have your RPMs 
uh, you have to repeat rotations per minute, and that goes with your BPMs. You have to plan that out with the beats per minute of the song. And after a while, you are able to hear it better, the music, and understand what songs will fit with what drill you're doing and all of that. Teaching at a university, everything's a lot more uniform. When I'm teaching at a studio at home, it's more creative. So, but I like to have that balance. It's really fun getting to teach over breaks and it's really fun getting to teach at home. So yeah, some classes take me a lot of time, some take no time at all. You'll find classes that you like to plan easily and some that you don't. You're gonna have classes that you like to teach, classes you like to take, and you won't like to do both of them. So also, it was really unique at Penn State that we have that training program and it's a whole community. So we have our mentees, mentors. I can just work with them throughout, this, throughout the year. So there was a new ITP group, um, instructor training program group. And I kind of helped out a couple times with them in the fall, but I was on the special events committee. So that's when we're planning out like winter palooza, the week before winter break, week long fitness classes. There was polar Pilates, jingle barbell, and a sleigh ride. Also, you're always open or allowed to make themes for your class whenever you want. They all have like so many opportunities for us while teaching through the university, which is really cool. So that's where I spend a lot of my time with my involvement on campus. And so another thing that we would do is like survivor night with like Outlast out, out, Outplay, challenge night. Um, they did like NFL combine night where you do like those drills. There was like a fitness through the decades one weekend um, on a Saturday. It was like four hours of classes, like jazzercise, tai bo, like those old weird classes. Oh my God, jazzercise. jazzercise is weird, but like those old throwback classes. <laughs> this semester I was on instructor development. Those are like little meetings so you learn how to improve certain formats, developing your skills. We spend a lot of time together, especially going through your ITP group. It's like kind of like a generational, there's the ITP before helps teach that ITP. There's the ITP before that. So, and I know that I looked up to all of the instructors. I still look up to all the older instructors. They, there are some really talented girls that do this. There's one guy named Sal. You're constantly able to learn from all of these older instructors. You're kind of just learning from everyone before you and passing on these traditions with your mentee, mentor, the committees that you get to be involved in are super cool. If the university has something like this, you should really try to be involved in it if you enjoy working out, if you want other people to enjoy working out, if you want something that's unique to do in college and something you can take with you for the rest of your life. I know JMU has an instructor training program and that's how they get their instructors at their school. But if your school doesn't have it, maybe you try to get it started. There is a hard hobby to have while being in school. You hope that they're enjoying themselves while they're working out. A lot of times you just get like death stares, you kinda. But people, those people that give you death stares during the class end up coming up at the end and say, that was like a great class, thank you so much. And then while you're teaching, you may not always be in the best mood or you may not be feeling good. You may um, be feeling insecure about something, not wanna stand up in front of that whole room because it can be really isolating and you are leading the whole class through an hour trying to entertain them, trying to talk to them, keep up their energy and their motivation. And it can be hard if you're not feeling that way or if you're tired or you have an exam coming up and you're stressed out. So there are definitely pros and cons when teaching at your university, teaching at a studio, or maybe you're teaching in school at a studio, which I have not done. It's nice teaching at different places because you get to try in so many different other people's classes. You get to see how other people do their formats. And while more younger people are taking your classes at school, and at studio at home, it's more adult women that take my classes and that also teach alongside me. I was the I am the youngest instructor at that studio, but I get to learn so much from them and they help so much, just like those um, like the older instructors at school help. Both places, we help each other with our plans, we help each other with our playlists, share music, um, we spend like time with each other outside of it, and then both places have patrons that I felt that I just have got enjoyed getting to know and it's so much fun and even 
going to other studios if I feel like talking to the instructor at the end of class then you kind of have like that bond with them already that find the type of job that you're passionate about and that you can find like my new people is really cool and it's really something I would try to do if I'm looking for a job. Teaching while in school is kind of unconventional. There's only like, out of like the 40, 50,000 kids at Penn State, there's only like 50, 40, 50, I can't remember the exact number of instructors. It's also personal trainers, but um, it's kind of unconventional. You know, a lot of people don't even go to the gym ever while they're at school. And while we're constantly at the gym, if I'm not at the I Am Building or White, I'm at Orange Theory or I'm at the gym in my apartment building, like, cause it kind of just consumes you or you're working out in your bedroom, trying to come up with new things for your class. You're just constantly moving and exercising. And there's so many different aspects to fitness, which make it so much fun to be a part of. And you never really can get too tired of it because you can always, if you don't like that format, you can take a little break or teach a whole different one. And there's so many trainings you can do. You have to do continuing education courses anyway. So you're constantly learning, constantly meeting new people. Definitely teaching fitness classes is something that has made my college experience what it is. Everyone has a very unique college experience and unique hobbies and activities to get involved in. And this is what I've chosen to do. And it's very rewarding and something that I'm so glad I can do throughout my whole life. Thank you all for watching this video today. I hope that you enjoyed listening to what it's like teaching fitness classes in college and kind of my experience with it. And yeah, so make sure to like and subscribe. Check out Michaela's mashup for those two blog posts. There's also a lot more content coming soon. Some little workouts are coming. We have um, some instructor tools I'll be putting out, some tips and tricks on how to plan classes and so formats, playlists. Uh, yeah, I'll put out a lot of workout playlists here pretty soon. So there's a lot that you'll be able to see if you make sure to come back. But have a great day, bye.